To speak of feminism today, you know, it's a complex question because the feminist movement has been so appropriated, distorted, manipulated, that today when you speak of feminism or feminist, you have to clear the way from a lot of assumption and misunderstanding. So to me, feminism, it's a political position that uh, is very much connected to a certain understanding, a certain viewpoint, a certain history of struggle. And uh, it's uh, connected with the history of struggle the women of a generation have made, you know, starting on the terrain of reproduction. So to me, feminism is very much connected. You know, uh, feminism is not related to any biological category, but it's related to a history of experiences of work and struggle and to also the rejection, you know, of a particular form of exploitation to which women have been subjected in capitalist society and also in many ways before capitalism, right? So it expresses a particular type of struggle. It expresses also a vision of another type of society, you know, a type of society that is not based on the exploitation of human labor, is not based on the construction of hierarchy, like gender hierarchy, racial hierarchy, and of the recuperation of our relationship with the natural world, with animals, with other people. For me, feminism is uh, embedded, you know, particularly what we call popular feminism, you know, in the kind of struggles that we see in many parts of the world, and certainly in the, in the American continent, certainly all through the South, you know, where women are in the front line, you know, in the struggle against land expropriation, land privatization. So to me, this is what feminism means. I've been very critical. I think it's very important today to fight against this other conception of feminism, which is basically women having a piece of the pie. <laughs> so this feminism that has been what I call state feminism or United Nations feminism that uh, has been uh, you know, used and manipulated you know, to give women a kind of illusion that the system is concerned with their well-being and is concerned with giving them a place and in reality has used feminism and the whole idea of emancipation through labor uh, to basically you know, integrate you know, women uh, into the machine, the capitalist work machine, exploiting the desire for autonomy to basically extract a huge, immense amount of cheap labor and recruiting women in millions and millions of maquilas, in millions and millions of factories and cheap, cheap work uh, that in fact are destroying women's life and, uh, and women's soul. We really need all the time to clarify what we mean by feminism and to fight within this appropriation of the feminist agenda. You know, when the women's movement began in the early 70s, in a perhaps confused way, but many, many women uh, had, were convinced that you couldn't change the condition of women without changing the whole. That it was the whole of society that had to be turned upside down. Words of sojourner truth, mm -hmm. right? You know, but that, that is tremendously has changed. And so that's why the confusion today. So it's not the feminism of equality with men or is not the feminism of, uh, you know, a better share of the, of the capitalist pie, whatever that is, or, or the feminism of women joining the army and now having the right to kill. I still am very optimistic. I think that there is another feminism that is still very strong and very alive. And we saw it in the 8th of March in places like Spain, or Argentina, where millions of women had gone into the street saying, ni una mena, no to the violence against women. And, uh, and these demonstrations were very impressive 
because they were very intergenerational. I saw a lot of young women and older women and in Latin America also very multinational. I think for the first time, a lot of Mapuche women it is a feminist movement that is now very multinational. Be very careful with the, this social media. I've been very critical for a long time you know, of the position that says that, oh, now we have this social media and Twitter and all of this, and they're bringing us together. They're really helping us move along the revolution. I remember there was a time when they used to say that Twitter uh, or Facebook uh, created the Arab Spring. And I've been very, very critical because when we see what's behind you know, this, uh, this technology. We see that this technology are really, you know, they are the expression of the, of the heights of capitalist power. When we see the results of this technology, how it is used, we see the far from uniting, it divides people, it isolates you. My message is a real mistake to think that this technology is what is empowering us. You know, that word empowerment, that this, technology is an empowering technology. What is not seen is that there is another wealth, there is a social wealth that is uh, lost, is forgotten. You know, the social wealth of the coming together, the social wealth of, you know, of creating a kind of a social fabric where you connect with people in your community, you connect with the people that you're doing work. And there's something also that I think is very detrimental to politics this fetish about uh, you know, digital technology and the social media. It's created an illusion that you know that because you can communicate, I don't know, with China, or you can communicate with places far away, that somehow you know, you know about these places. You know, that because you have a little bit of contact and you can read here and there, you know, and in reality, when you begin to, to travel, when you go with people, when you see the situation with your own eyes, you see how far different. You see how far different. So it, it creates a distorted conception of reality. It creates a lot of arrogance because uh, you know, this illusion of knowing all and being so you know, on top of the global situation.